What's up guys, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC and you're watching part four of the bottom end rebuild for the KTM 690 and Husky 701. If you're not to this point yet, make sure you go back and watch the other videos in our rebuild series. But for us, we're ready to drop the bearings into our case halves. So a couple things to do that. We're gonna need a way to heat these case halves up, whether it be an oven, a torch, or a heat gun. And then we've laid the bearings out in order. You can freeze these to help the process go a little smoother. We've also laid out our seals that are gonna go into these. And then we're gonna be using a bearing driver and hammer and also some grease and a little bit of Loctite for these screws that lock down the bearings. Now we're using a torch to heat this case half up. And if you're using this method, just be cautious. You don't wanna hold the torch in one spot. You wanna heat the whole thing evenly and that way you don't warp it. Now that we have the case half heated up, we're gonna start installing the bearings and we'll start with the crankshaft main bearing. To help this go in easier, you can put some grease on the outside diameter of it. And when you start driving this in, make sure it's going in squarely and you'll know that it's fully seated when you hear the pitch change. Now, as you drive these bearings in, keep in mind that any bearings with this groove in it need to face the inside of the case half or the groove needs to face the inside of the case half. That way these washers can hook onto that groove and lock the bearing in place. Now we'll go ahead and do these same steps to the other case half. A couple of things I do want to point out are that the manual will have you press some of these seals in before installing the bearings. But since we're using a torch instead of an oven to heat the cases up, we'll avoid damaging these seals by installing the bearings first. Next, we'll install the screws that lock the bearings into place, and we're going to use a medium strength thread lock. Now, this thread locker that I'm using is red, and that's just because it's for high temperatures. And then torque all the bolts down to 4.4 foot-pounds. Next, we're gonna install the oil jets and we're gonna apply some medium strength thread lock to them as well. Now again, we're gonna apply medium strength to the other oil jet and just barely enough to get on there. You don't wanna clog anything up and we'll tighten that down. Now we can take our cover plate, set that into place, and these screws are gonna be tightened to 4.4 foot-pounds. Once the oil jets are in place, you can use some compressed air to blow through the passageways to make sure that there's no Loctite in there. Next, we'll install these oil plugs with some new sealing washers. Next, we need to get our crankshaft ready for installation. So that means putting this balancer gear on. So we're gonna take two bolts, install those into this gear We're going to take our hot plate. We're going to heat this gear up. And while that's heating up, I'm going to take, we have some press out plates. I'm going to set the crankshaft with the gear side up in these plates. 
And when you do this, be really careful. You don't want to drop this crankshaft and damage it. And the second plate comes in from the top just like that. So that's going to hold the crank secure while we drop that gear into place. And then when you press this into place, keep in mind there's a dot right on top. That needs to be timed with that balancer shaft. And then also one of these circles is going to be slightly smaller than all the rest. And that's what's going to go on that dowel pin on the crankshaft. And now we can heat up the special tool to install that inner bearing race. And this tool, you want to get it to roughly 250 degrees. And we'll slide this down into place. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm going to flip the crankshaft over and get that tool heating back up. Then we can install our shim on this side. And all you're doing is letting this tool heat up that race so it slides right on. Once that's cooled down, you can remove your crankshaft from the vise. We've gone ahead and mounted up the right case half in our engine stand. So we'll go ahead and install crankshaft followed by the counterbalancer and then we have this shim that goes on the end of the counterbalancer and now we're going to bolt on the other case half we're going to torque those bolts down to 7.2 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern Now that we have the bolts torqued, we've gone ahead and tightened down the cases into our engine stand and that way we can measure the axial play with this dial indicator. So we've gone ahead and set this up. This just has a magnetic base, works great with this engine stand. And I'm going to grab the other side of the crankshaft and try to move this back and forth. And when you're moving this, you want to make sure that you're not actually moving the stand or just the case halves on the stand. This has to be really secure to get an accurate reading. Now that we've taken our measurements, we know that we need to change shims on both the crank and balancer shaft. Some of you may not need to do that, but we'll go ahead and swap those shims out. These shims are sold individually on our website under the OEM diagrams, but like our crankshaft bearing kit, it actually came with a variety of shims. Now when you're adjusting shims on the crankshaft, you want to make sure you do the same measurement on each side of that crank. And then the balancer shaft, again, it's only going to have shims on one side. So for our balancer shaft, we had 10 thousandths of an inch clearance and we want to take it down to about 5 thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to measure the shim that came out of there. So this one's measuring six thousandths of an inch and to take up the five thousandths of an inch we're going to add a five thousandths of an inch shim with this one or you could find one that's about eleven thousandths of an inch thick and that's going to get you at your correct measurement. Five thousandths is just right in the middle of that spec. Now the crankshaft we're going to take away some shims on each side until we get that correct spec in there. Now that we have the correct axial clearance, we've gone ahead and pulled the cases back apart and now we're going to drive all the seals in. We'll start with these crankshaft seals. When you drive these in, make sure they're going in square and the open side on this one will be facing out away from the case halves. The other seals will have the open side facing in to the center of the case halves.
Next we'll install the oil and water seal for the water pump shaft. And on these seals, I'm gonna put some grease on the lips. And then for this first oil seal, it's gonna be the same on both sides. So we can put it in either way. So just to make sure it's square, I'm gonna hit it flush. Next, we can install the water seal. And this one, I've already greased it up. We're just gonna hit it in until it's flush. After that, you'll wanna apply grease to the rest of the seals while you still have access to them. Next, we're ready to install the transmission shafts into the right crankcase half. And when you go together with this, you wanna make sure that you have plenty of assembly lube on everything. All right, now for the shift forks, we can get these installed. This very bottom one is gonna have the fork centered on this part that goes, the shaft goes through. So we'll put that on the bottom. The middle one is gonna have a smaller inside diameter for that circle. And to get this in place, we're gonna lift up on the gear that it attaches to. Let that slide down. And then it's gonna be easiest if we put our shift drum in now. And you just wanna line those pins up with their grooves. Then we can put the top shift fork in place. This one looks more like an L. And line it up with its groove. Then the shift fork pin will apply some assembly lube and slide it down into place. Now before we go any further, we're gonna clean this case half, the ceiling surface. Because once we get some of the other parts on, it's gonna be really hard to get to some of these spots. Then we've got an O-ring we need to install. So I'll set that in place. And then I'm gonna install the five dowel pins. After that, we can install the crankshaft. Now we can install the balancer shaft. Just keep in mind we have the dots on these gears that need to line up. On the left side of the case, we're gonna lube up these bearings as well. Just put a light coating and that way it doesn't drip down into the gasket maker we're gonna put on the ceiling surface. For the case halves, all we're gonna do is apply just a little bit of moto seal all the way around the ceiling surface and you don't wanna to put too much on there. It's gonna go everywhere. Just a really thin film will work fine. Now we can set the left case half in place. It might be helpful to have a friend help you do this. And we're gonna to torque all the bolts down in a crisscross pattern to 7.4 foot pounds. Now we're gonna have four different sizes of bolts holding this case half down. So the longest one is gonna go up at the top. The second longest will go right here. Next we'll have the regular size bolts that go around the perimeter. And the smallest one is actually gonna go in this oil filter cavity and it's gonna have a copper washer or crush washer on it. Next, we'll install the O-ring on the counter shaft. And then we'll apply some grease to this collar and install it onto the counter shaft. On the other side of the motor, we need to install a washer and a snap ring on the counter shaft. Now, if you can feel a more square edge 
On your snap ring, you want the square edge so it's facing out. Next, we're going to install the oil pumps. Now, we're going to start with this thinner one that's right here, and this dot will face towards the inside of the case. And when you assemble this, just make sure you use plenty of assembly lube. We have our shaft with our pin through it, and I'm going to install the smaller gear. The dot, again, will be facing the inside of the case. And then we'll install our cover. We're going to use some medium strength thread lock on the bolts and torque them to 4.4 foot pounds. Then we'll do those same steps on the other oil pump. Next, we'll install the oil pump drive gears, and to do that, we're going to start with a washer. Install the pin. And then line up the tab in the plastic gear, or the groove, with the pin. We've got one more washer, and then a new retaining clip. And just make sure that clip is fully seated. And then we'll do the same steps with the other gear. Next, we're going to install the locking arm. So we have this bolt that goes through it. We have a collar that comes from the back side. And we're going to use some medium strength Loctite on the bolt. We'll torque it to 7.4 foot pounds. Next, we'll install the shift drum locator. Now, you'll notice on the back side, these cutouts are different sizes, so make sure you line those up correctly. And then again, we're going to use medium strength Loctite on our bolt, and we're going to torque it down to 7.4 foot-pounds. After that, you'll want to install the shift shaft. Don't forget the washer. Now we'll push down on the sliding plate and Push the shift shaft all the way down. Just make sure there's a spring back here and a tab. Make sure the spring is centered on that tab. And once you have this in place, it's a good idea to temporarily install your shifter and spin your main shaft and shift through all the gears to make sure everything's working correctly. Then we'll start installing some of these starter gears. So I'm gonna apply assembly lube to the needle bearings. and to the idler gear, and then we'll slide that on. Then we have the bearing for the torque limiter. Install the torque limiter. And that has a washer and a snap ring on it. Then we have this idler gear that goes on top. Again, we've got a washer and a snap ring. Next, we have our woodruff key. I'm gonna set that into place. I'm gonna very lightly tap on that with a hammer just to get it to sit all the way down. After that, we have our primary drive gear. This has the one-way clutch in it. You wanna make sure that has some lube on there. 
And to help get the primary drive gear lined up, you can rotate this freewheeling gear or the idler gear in the back. That's gonna help it with the one-way clutch. Next, we have this big washer for the clutch. Slide that on. Then we can slide our clutch basket into place. Just keep in mind that these gears all need to mesh. So you're gonna to have to rotate these and gently press everything into place and even the whole basket to line up with that primary. Next, we have the half washers. I'm going to apply some grease to them. That way they stay in place. And when you install these, you want the sharper edge to be facing out. After that, we're ready to install the clutch pack. And I actually did loosen up these screws just a little bit. And that's gonna allow these fibers to move around and the clutch can slide into place. Keep in mind that this hub, it does need to line up with the splines on this shaft. So it is possible that you'll have to have these loose enough where you can rotate all of those fibers so just a little tip, keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna make sure we have no oil on these main shaft threads. After that, we can install our new washer. So this washer is the new updated style. We'll apply medium strength Loctite to these threads on the nut. And we're gonna to torque that down to 73.8 foot-pounds. And we're gonna use our gear jammer to help us do that. And just make sure before you tighten it down, you wanna make sure that the clutch pack is all tightened up. Just remember, this nut is reverse thread on this one. Next, we'll install our push piece and our pressure plate. And we're gonna to torque all of the bolts that hold these four springs down to 4.4 foot-pounds. To install the water pump impeller, we're gonna first slide on the washer. We'll use medium strength Loctite on the bolt and torque it to 7.4 foot-pounds. Now we're gonna heat our lower cam chain sprocket on our hot plate. We wanna get it 212 degrees. And in the meantime, I'm going to install these Woodruff keys. And you wanna make sure there's no oil or grease on this crankshaft end. Now we can install our pickup coil and we're using medium strength thread lock on these bolts, but we're not gonna tighten them down all the way yet. We also need to make sure we get the snap ring on the end of our cam sprocket. Next, we're gonna take our cam chain. We've already sprayed some light oil on this. And we're gonna feed this up through the case half and onto the sprocket. Now we can start to put our cam chain guide into place and our pickup coil wire will feed through that. On the back side, there's just a little rail that wire sits in. And we'll take our guide that sits towards the back of the engine. We've got this collar, push it through. And we'll install our bolt. We do have some medium strength thread lock on this bolt. Now we can take the other tensioner or the other guide. We'll slide it onto the chain. This plastic piece 
we're going to have to press this down to let the guide past it. And then we can take the collar, press it into place, and install the bolt. All right, so we've made sure we have no grease or oil on this tapered shaft or on this flywheel on the taper. So we're gonna go ahead and line this flywheel up with the woodruff key. So now we need to install the lock washer and the nut and we'll torque it to 73.8 foot pounds. So this is just kind of my own thing, but I like to put a little grease on the gaskets and that way if I ever have to take this cover back off, then the gasket probably won't stick to both sides. The only thing I will do is I'm going to apply a little bit of silicone to that grommet and I'm going to leave that dry around that silicone area. That way we get a good seal where that meets up. Then we can install the two dowel pins, put the gasket in place. And then on this cover itself, just where this grommet meets the corners, you can apply just a little bit of silicone on each side. Then when you put this cover on, have it lined up as close as you can and that magnet is going to pull this on pretty hard, so just watch your fingers and make sure they're not under the cover. Then when we put the bolts in, we have the two longer bolts on these opposite sides. And then the rest of these bolts are the same size. And again, they all get torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds. Next, we're going to take our seal and install it into our clutch cover. And this open side will be facing down. We're going to drive this in until it lightly bottoms out. Now we're ready to install our covers. So I'm going to put our dowel pins in place. Then we'll go ahead and set the water pump gasket in place. For these bolts, the longest one is gonna go just underneath that oil filter cover. The next to longest is gonna go down here and then this one, that's going to be the same size. It's going to go on the opposite side. And this is the same hole that your dowel pin is in. And then the regular bolts will be in the rest of the slots. And we'll install our covers and torque all of those bolts to 7.4 foot-pounds. After that, we can install the oil filter and the cover. And you want to apply some oil to the rubber surfaces, and we've also installed a new O-ring. Back on the other side, we'll install the oil filter and our gear position sensor.
and we'll also use some Loctite on the sensor bolts. Now we can install our drain plug and our two oil screens. We're also using new O-rings on those screens. And that's it for the bottom end rebuild on this KTM 690 or your Husky 701. Now, if you need any of the parts we use today, a lot of this stuff is just gonna be under the OEM diagrams, the filters, we have a lot of different options for. And don't forget to follow us over to the top end rebuild series. We'll show you how to get that done and subscribe to the channel for more helpful content. I'm Charles, thanks for watching.